We were looking to do something slightly different than other programs. Um, we certainly helped people, but it wasn't a service trip. We had prayer and faith as a part of what we did, but this wasn't a pilgrimage, nor was it for academic credit as part of a semester-long class, something totally different. Uh, Pope Francis talks a lot about a theory and a theology of encounter, going to where people are, or being with them in their everyday life, if you will, but building a real relationship with them instead of just kind of throwing answers or looking from the outside, trying to learn from people exactly where they are. So this is what we tried to do. We went to the schools, sat in the classrooms, talked with the students, talked with their teachers. And it wasn't just a one-time thing, okay, I got it. The most important thing, I think, was to go back, to return. It was just a beautiful chance to build and deepen those relationships, to not only learn people's names, which was a big thing, but to learn their story and to learn from them, their adversities, their joys. I think our students saw that Though we come from different parts of the world, they have so much in common, so much that unites them and inspires them to have this genuine love and realize we're a lot closer than we might imagine. Our dear visitors, you are highly welcome. We thank the Lord Almighty who has brought you I definitely came into this trip um, hoping that I would grow through encounter with another culture, and I like without a doubt, I have. When we got here, I was definitely a little on the, on the shy side, the nervous side, kind of holding back emotions. Um, but these people are just like us, and it took us a little while to realize that. This is so different from anything I've ever been used, like, um, exposed to before. Coming here, like, it's, you know, it's, it's about seeing the country, but it's really about connecting with the people. And, you know, the whole theme of this, you know, encountering these, uh, these people here. But one of the things that stuck with me and hit me hard this trip is seeing the amount of joy that the people here have, um, regardless of their level of poverty, their social situation, or even their mental abilities. We stopped at St. Ursula's school, Special School, um, and there were kids there who had mental disabilities to the point that they were nonverbal. Um, they couldn't communicate other than just kind of yells and, and grunts and things. And yet, even in that condition, in extreme poverty, there was just joy that came through so clearly when we went to play and interact with them. It was amazing because the students were so happy to see us and they welcomed us with open arms and hugs and high fives and piggyback rides. And it was, yeah, I think that like, there was just so much love in that place and the minute you stepped off the bus you could feel it and you could feel that everybody was just like so happy to be there and happy to kind of just be in community with one another that I was so blessed to be a part of it. It was so fun playing with you today and the other day um, and I hope I can come back someday. Thank you. I have a brother with special needs at home and it's been awesome to see at home obviously how privileged we've been to be able to take care of him and like all the things that we have because of the position our family's in that have allowed him to um, be healthy. So as educators in the faith in Holy Cross, as a school ourselves at Notre Dame, we really made it a point to make education the forefront of what we did. We started off uh, talking with the children at the St. Ursula's Special School. Uh, we continued meeting with teachers and students at a primary school, St. Benedict's run by Benedictine sisters here. And we also went to a really amazing, what we would call high school, Lakeview, Holy Cross Lakeview Secondary School. Nice to meet you. Me too. So Antonio said you're studying civil engineering. We talked with them set for you know 20 or 25 minutes just talking about their dreams and goals and the way that they live here and the things that they do and the ways that's different than what we've experienced in our lives. That's a true encounter where we get to know the other um, in a much better way than just touring around somewhere.
For me as a Holy Cross religious, as a priest in the congregation here, it was wonderful to see my brothers, brother priests and brothers, uh, here in Uganda. We have so many different parts of our lives, that's for sure, but there are so many things that unite us. We quickly were talking about our common experiences in formation in the seminary, uh, why we felt called to this kind of life, our heroes in Holy Cross, if you will, both those that have gone before, like Father Moreau and St. Andre Bessette, and other men who are still living, who inspired us to hear this call and respond to it. That was a real highlight for me, too. You won't go around in circles, so just as the Spirit moves you to share, uh, why don't you open up, and hopefully you'll be just kind of listening, Feel free to respond and kind of riff off of people or just totally change the subject. This is totally open within the bounds of talking about how these days, how these people, how these experiences have shaped your heart and formed maybe even something new. I expected it to be more of poverty tourism and be a little bit outside of the community. Um, but the way we got to hear people's stories, experience people's stories, kind of see some of the classrooms and whatnot, um, and just kind of live with these people for a week. Um, in some regards, um, really just makes it that much more of a shock and that much more of a change um, to have that kind of encounter. When they say they want to be successful, they don't mean successful in a monetary way. They mean successful because they want to be teachers to give kids a good education, to give them a chance. They want to be doctors because they see everyone becoming sick um, and these clinics popping up and diseases coming and they see the problems in home and they want to be successful and make an impact without the desire to become rich. If we do this, we come here and justify it to ourselves that you know, it's good that we did this and then don't do anything about it. We failed. I don't know exactly what this will mean for what we should do in the future, but if we don't, I mean, I think if there's one thing that a lot of us have learned about, you know, starting like initiatives or research or something like that is if we, you know, maybe we can have big ideas about what things we want to do, but if we don't come up with very concrete and doable tasks for the near future, it fades away. The stories will fade, but those virtues can like continue throughout our lives. Um, and I think that'll make the biggest impact when we get back. Just to see these amazing students that will go on to be medical doctors, go on to be architects and engineers in different parts of the U.S., maybe they won't spend long periods of time abroad working or studying, but just knowing that they're going to carry this in their heart, that they had shared that without prompting, we had brought them to that conclusion, but they had really run with it, to know that while this is ending, and frankly while some of them are going to graduate, guys I've known for four years, all through their time at Notre Dame, although that time is ending, this will continue on to continue to bear fruit. I mean, I was almost choking up with that. It was just beautiful to see. I, I just could not be happier with this experience. So everything's come full circle. We've uh, shed a lot of old parts of ourselves and grown all together the same. Uh, our hearts have just expanded in ways that we can only share with each other. Uh, and so we hope to share that with everyone we've encountered back home. That's kind of our mission, at least short term. Upon my life.